You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Good morning, my dear friends. My name is Pastor Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of the Powerhouse Ministries International. Once again, we start another year with God's favor abandoned toward us. Indeed, this is our year of harvest. I wish to personally invite you to join us at any of our three services, 6 a.m., 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. This year, as we enter into the harvest, I shall be teaching a lot about your sickle for the harvest. You need a sickle to enter into your harvest. Come and join us as we take our harvest this year. Come with your family and friends. You are welcome any day, any time. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 12 through to 15. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded and if in anything you be otherwise minded god shall reveal this even unto you so anybody who has a mind of reaching perfection or attaining excellence the bible says that it starts with a mindset that's verse 15. so how do i grow myself how do i develop it starts with having a mindset the bible says that let therefore as many as be perfect have this mind and if in anything you are otherwise minded god shall reveal this to you so from verse 12 to 14 it's going to show you the mindset of great people why some people achieve a lot why people become famous why people do exploits why some people become rich and others are poor why people are successful and others are not so your mind your mind when you see something happening it's a mindset it means that when you see poverty it is a mindset when you see people who do little things it is a mindset now the word mindset is like concrete that has been poured when it is soft you can change it but when it sets you can't break it because it is set that is what we talk about when we talk about a mind set a mind that has been set you've made up your mind nothing seems to be able to change it now so it is important you understand how volatile your mind is and what you feed your mind and how you think you are the way you think as a man thinketh so is he you are transformed by the renewing of your mind you are not transformed just by prayer you are transformed by the renewing of your mind you can pray a lot and still have the same negative mindset of poverty you can pray a lot and still have a mindset of failure your mouth is praying but your mind is still thinking the same so the place where changes take place is where so when you see a rich man and a poor man what is the difference when you see an advanced country and a, a poor country what's the difference so when you see somebody who's doing well and somebody's not doing well is the mind so if you can change your mind you can change your tomorrow that is why god gives us teachers that is why the holy ghost is a teacher because he wants to bring new truths he wants to show you things your mind so you can renew your mind Look, if I give you a thousand cities and you have 
a same mindset. After one week, the man will get finished, you come back to base one. What will you do? Man let he konekaton ya, but ibata. Man yele fiu fiu shibata. Because your mindset is that thousand species is meant to be chopped till it gets finished. You don't have anything else in your mind. So one of the things God does is that he works on your mind. If you are going to change, he works on your mind, your mind, your mind. Your mind is the bridge between the spirit and the natural. Before anything happens in the natural, your mind must conceive it. So everything that is created on this earth, it came from somebody's mind. He thought about it, he conceived it, and then he manufactured it. It started maybe as an idea, a concept, a thought. So your mind, what is your mind about prosperity? Hey, you see, you are revealing your mind. Hey, what have you just said? You have told yourself that as for you, you are not one of them. You see, your mindset. And usually when people are pressed, when they go through difficulty, then you find out what their mindset is. Hey, you see, your mind, you may be in church, you may be talking a lot, but your mind, your mind. And if we start putting you under pressure, what is in your mind will come out. Okay, so it says, let anybody who is going to achieve a lot, let him have a certain mind. What is the mind? Verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, neither were also perfect. So the mindset is that people who achieve great things, they are never satisfied with themselves. Never. You know, when people have small things and they get satisfied, me and mama to feel kuni mahimi, mukwakbana, no pen tower. A me can not show bibio kuni in come here. You see, when people are satisfied with small things, they will never achieve their potential. I've asked myself, how come Coca-Cola is all over the world? I mean, if I own a company. And everybody in Ghana was buying. If immediately find out that you there, you are okay. You don't even think about going to Nigeria. But Coca-Cola, the mindset is that we will touch every country. Every corner, every village, somebody must drink Coca-Cola. Every house must know Coca-Cola. So that mindset is what pushes them. Look at Microsoft. Everybody must have a computer and use that software. Not just America. Not just the state he was born. Because it's possible. You see, some of us, hey, many honey, hey, abahini, hey, abahini, hundred cities. You are so satisfied with little. And that's the problem. Because your mindset is so little that it can't be expanded. You, nobody can push you beyond your mindset. Oh, many, watch, watch, la, la. You see, nobody can push you beyond that mindset. Because that is what you think. You become a slave to your own mind. But then you don't have to before witches, before demons can touch you, your mindset. Your mindset is so little and so frozen that nothing seems to be able to enter. So one of the things you find out that when we're fasting, we're praying is that give us new ideas. We don't want old, new. Our mindset is filled with the old. We want something new. We want something that we haven't thought about before. We want new thoughts. We want new dreams. We want new ideas. We want to be able to do bigger things than we used to do. Where does it start? Okay, so let me ask you a question. What new idea have you thought about this year? What new thing have you thought about this year to do? You see, if you are struggling with that question, you are frozen. If the whole of this year, after all the prayer and fasting, you haven't thought of any new thing to do. You haven't thought of any bigger thing to do than what you were. And, and so sometimes, you see, because we don't see the mind, people come, hey, 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 hey. you are praying, and everybody sees you praying, but your mind... You can't think far. I can't think far. You must think far. Because if you can think far, you will go far. If you are a seamstress, you mean you, you haven't thought of any new thing. If you are a pastor, what new thing have you thought about? If you are a prayer warrior, what new thing have you thought about? If you are an usher in the singers, what new thing have you thought about? You see why we go to school. You see why we read books. You see why we travel and see. Because everybody thinks you are so spiritual, but your mind is blocked. Because you don't think new things. And so you can't do new things. It says, not as though I had already attained. No, no. Not as though I had already attained. So the first question is, what, what have you thought about concerning your own life that will move you into another level? 
So if you are running a business, what have you thought about? If you are married, if you are in a relationship, if you are starting a business, if you are in ministry, what new things have you thought about? So the first thing you do is you take a pen and paper and write 10 new things I'm thinking about for this year concerning my business, concerning my relationship, concerning my finances. If you can't think, you can't get it. Not as though I had already attained. You want somebody to give you money. You can't think of what you use the money for. Oh, we have me thousand. Mommy are here. In Macbachuni. Meaning rich Macbachu. And so somebody gives you thousands this. You are in debt. You keep running away. Destroy everything because you can't think far. Not as though I had already attained or were perfect. In ministry, you are a prayer warrior. You are an usher. You are a cell leader. Not as though I had already attained. I mean, you have five members. You are feeling so big. People who achieve a lot, their mindset is not as though I had attained. So anytime you find people who are very satisfied, and one of the things I'm praying to God is that we will stir up some dissatisfaction. In your family, nobody's educated. As for you, have gone to SSS, so you are satisfied. Call your school, put them chair. You are okay. You see, that mindset is what destroys people. Because some people are too satisfied with too little. With too little. You sing one song. You play 10 minutes, you preach one sermon, then you are satisfied. Hey, oh boy, Jimmy, everybody's giving you fans, and people are clapping at mediocrity. And because of that, oh shit. I think you should put this verse on a mirror in your bedroom, and every morning you should remind yourself in Sheku. You are still small. In fact, I was looking at 22 people in the world, just 22. They own more than the whole of Africa with our gold, with our minerals, with our cocoa, with our bauxite just 22 people in the world have more wealth than every resource and everybody in Africa. You have one million. Charlie, oh shit. In your house, you are the only person who has a car. Oh shit. You can't think about five cars. You can't think about five businesses. You are so small. You are so small. We are frozen. And that is why many of you quarrel. Because I'm better than you. I'm better than you. In Yeshka Fibu. In Yeshka Fibu. In Leni Fibu. Meanwhile, you, in the world scheme of affairs, you are nowhere. Not as though I had already attained. Not as though I had already attained or were perfect. Yet, you take the mic, you think, okay, yeah, local champion. You play one song, yeah. You preach one message, yeah. You are walking around, my friend, my prophet, because you had one. And this is what kills many of us. Minus this church, we must never be satisfied with little. In fact, every time we come for service, our next service must be better. Every time you play, the next time you play must be better. Every time you sing, the next ministration must be better. Unfortunately, as for the world, they'll clap for you. In fact, if I finish preaching, whether I like it or not, you all clap. So, because of that, we don't do any self-examination. We don't even want to progress. It's nothing. Not as though we had already attained. Not as though we had already attained. Stop being satisfied with little. Stop celebrating little. Stop clapping for people who are mediocre. Hairdresser, you have some small shop. He said 10 by 12, maybe 10 by 5. And yet in the area, me Yoshika. What is that? What is that? You bought some car. It's not even second hand, third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand. Ties are worn out. You are so excited. It's a good start. But don't be satisfied. It's a good start to buy a car to start with. But not as though we had already attained. Either we're already perfect. You see. There's a mindset that cripples progress. It doesn't help people. And God is telling us clearly that this is the kind of thing that anybody who achieves greatness must overcome. You must overcome it. Hey, me and Nani Chumo, hey, I've been here pay me thousand two. Chale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all your classmates are happy. Chale, chale, breakthrough. But that's just the starting. You don't own the company. If you are happy, what will the owner of the company be doing? And in Nani Chumo, I have me car, I have me petrol. But the car is not yours. The petrol you didn't buy it it's a good start but don't be satisfied because there is more not as though i had already attained either were perfect the next verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended say it again brethren i count not myself to have apprehended this is apostle paul he's preached more messages than any pastor he's brought more revelation than anybody He's brought revelations from the third heavens. He says, I've been to the third heavens. And yet, he says, Charlie, apart from all these revelations, he says, still in Sheku. 
you you've preached at a cell meeting once your cell members are giving funds you want to go and start a church you see look you have been apprehended you have been apprehended if you have one cell aim for more if you have sung one song now start writing songs if you are playing somebody's songs start creating your own beats reach for more i count not myself to have apprehended you see what the bible is showing us that there's a level beyond just getting into what i call creating till you bring something that didn't exist into being you are very far behind every rich man produces or invents something and he owns it should i say it again every rich man produces or invents or creates or discovers something for other people you see all of us we should start thinking oh, and stop thinking just about where you are start thinking bigger than where you are start thinking what can i do more and bigger and better than what i'm doing now so i'm a cell leader what can i do more what can i do better what can i do bigger what can i do that will add value to what i'm doing now you see when you cannot think yourself other people always pay you what they think they should pay you till you start thinking i count not myself to have apprehended the choir just take your mind off thinking you are a good choir ashes stop thinking like that prayer warriors you see start thinking if you're a prayer warrior there's more you can do you can enter into the realm of prophetic ministry you can enter into the realm of deliverance you can enter into the realm of holy ghost baptism and healings See, you are just coming and praying one hour then restoration and then you go no holy ghost baptism no miracles no signs and wonders you can do more choir you can sing in a way that anointing falls down nobody can even minister it happened the glory descends tangible presence of the lord don't just come and sing a song for a clapping no pastors don't just be interested in preaching a message and people clap and you take offering you see let's move to the realm where the signs and wonders are happening word of god is being confirmed the church is growing more people are coming to church the place is filled outreach don't just be interested in bringing five people let's do more let's bring 20 buses let's bring 30 buses because when you are satisfied with what you do you find out that that's all you do that's all there's nothing else for growth for expansion there's nothing because if it's not in you nobody can give it to you but paul says i do not count myself to have apprehended if last year i did one bus this year i'll do 10 buses because you yourself you are striving if last year i sold one dress this year i will learn to sew five dresses in a week if last year i prayed for one hour this year i'm going to add fasting to the prayer because i want more and you see every time you do the same thing more let me show you what it's like do you realize that the difference between ss economics and university economics this isn't the same economics but one is deeper one is more so if today you are learning ss economics you are good but there is university economics which is better and if you do economics at the university and somebody does invest uh, economics at sss they will pay the person at the university more because he knows more it's all economics but he knows more if somebody does a postgraduate or a doctorate degree of economics he knows more than somebody who has just done the first degree economics so we have all done economics but the depth of our economics is different so we are all tailors but our depth is different we are all prayer warriors but some of us have done master's degree in prayer we are all instrumentalists but some of us have a doctorate degree in playing guitar so you find out that when you yourself begin to go deeper you make yourself more valuable but if you say ah they can't try it cfg cfg you see and that's all you do you find out that somebody will come with a doctorate degree because you count yourself to have apprehended brethren i count not myself to have apprehended say it with me brethren i count not myself to have apprehended say it again brethren i count not myself to have apprehended so question number one again what new thoughts have occurred to you what new ideas have come to you what new thing are you going to be doing in what you do i count not myself to have apprehended all of us what we are enjoying today it is because somebody added and improved what was there somebody added you have come it is your time 
if you don't add, you'll be poor. If you have a mindset that that's for me, ah, uh, no need banana, no no, mahi, dan em mahi, dan em. You see, you'll be spending, giving to somebody. Nobody's giving to you because you, you haven't added anything. When you add value, people give to you. I count not myself. Even if somebody is singing a song, there's something called remix. The person's song, you take it, you change it, you reformat it, you sing it your own way, and you sing it another way. Everybody's wow. But you, you are singing the same person's song the same way. And you are never singing it well. You see, people will always go for the original. They don't want the counterfeit. Every one of us, we count not ourselves to have apprehended. We count not ourselves to have apprehended. I do not count myself to have apprehended. I refuse to be the same. I refuse just to do what everybody is doing. I want to step out. I want to add more. I want to be different. I want to make it different from what other people are doing. I want to change it. Sometime back, if you were a barber, you, you sat under a tree with a mirror and a blade. And I used to go and cut my hair. My barber was like that. I'll drive all the way to Usu. There's just a bench. And then he'll put some cloth around me. And then he'll be blowing hair all over me. Today you go to a barber shop. There's an air condition. There's light. There's a TV. There are hair cutting machines. You see, somebody has added. I can't know myself to have a friend. All those barbers that were under trees with one zam cutlasses, where are they? You see, if you get stuck, you'll be left behind. One of the things I keep praying to God, that I shall never be stuck. You were good yesterday, but you should not be stuck. Pastors, act yourselves. Ask yourself, what new thing are you going to do to improve yourself? What new thing are you going to do to improve your department? What new thing are you going to do to improve your work performance? What new thing are you going to do in the church? Not as though we are already attained. Not as though we are already attained. So when you find a church that is like, oh, what was it? What match? It's like, okay, be a network binner. Every year, the intensity of our drive goes up. I want to work harder. I want to push the church to the next level. I want to ask myself, what new skills do I bring in? What new things do I do? What new messages do I preach? Pastor, I preach messages, people. I call old one, I don't preach. I don't do that. But you are lazy. Oh, shit. Well, lazy way, cut the cell meeting. I feel lazy. I'm going to say, Charlie, last revelation. Check in, check in, check in. One, two, pack, pack, pack. No. What new. You see, go from SSS to university economics. Go from university economics to master's degree. Move from master's degree to doctor's degree. You may be teaching the same thing. But intensify the death. Intensify. Not as though I had already, but brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing, in Lakeshin Sheku, she mwe no kome kan here. Machine of Fenoni in film where can me say, I'm going to forget everything behind me. All the things I've done, no, no, I'm not going to let it worry me. I'm not going to let anybody talk about my past. I'm not going to let anybody say, oh, you were the singer. You were the pastor. Oh, you were the teacher. The last time I came to church, you preached, you sang, you played. Forget it. Oh, when I came for, you played well. Forget it. He says, me, myself, if other people won't forget, I will let people forget it. Because me, myself, I won't remember it. So I ask myself, how does Bill Gates, he's always thinking of Windows, he's thinking of Windows 10. He's thinking of Windows 11. He's thinking of Windows 12. What a person. Windows 10, everybody's buying it. Every machine is using it. But he says, no, Charlie, we've done 10. Let's move to 11. We've done 11. Let's move to 12. If Bill Gates every year can change Windows, what have you changed about your department? What have you changed about your prayer life? What have you changed in the ashes? You can't have ashes 2020. You are still working on ashes 19. You can't have choir 2020. You can't have powerhouse 2020. We are very different. This is a modern version of powerhouse 2019. Prayer warriors 2020 version. Very different from Prayer Warriors 2019. Church Members 2020. Very different from Church Members 2019. You see, when somebody starts thinking that way, the lifestyle changes. Because when you stop working, you start losing. So, once a month. When somebody comes to church, one of the reactions must be that this is the latest I want it. They hear the latest songs. They see the latest way of playing. They see the latest preaching. They see the latest ashes, well-groomed. Not, not 1970 version, but a new version. 
an updated version the latest version when i come to your shop i want to see changes that reflect 2020 every day you've been using calculator get a pos she done on your pencil you see get 2020 version you are the only person selling watchy but you are modern oh yeah start thinking what can i do to my watchy that will make me bigger and better than i used to be last year because i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind me i reach forth i reach forth i move on i don't want to see a 2019 version of the choir i don't want to see a 2019 version of the instrumentalist i don't want to see a 2019 version of pastor bernard i want the latest version i reach forth i reach forth i reach forth this year, Charlie, I'm going to reach forth. I'm going to buy a new car. I've never done Holy Ghost baptism before. I've just been bringing new converts. But now I'm going to establish them and I'm going to do Holy Ghost baptism for them. You see, I'm moving forward. I'm not just bringing them to church. I will teach them how to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I've never done Holy Ghost baptism before. I will do it. I'm the same person who was coming to church last year. 2019 version. My 2020 version is that I will not come alone. I will bring new converts. I will buy a car and I will call them every Sunday morning. And I will bring them. That's the 2020 version of me. I'm not going to behave like 2019. I'm not. Because there's a new version. But this one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind me. I'm reaching forth unto those things. Which are before. Which are before. Which are before. Get on the internet. Read new things. Find out what is going on. Look at new church buildings. If you're an usher, find out the latest ushering techniques. If you're in the choir, find out the best choir in the world and how, how they come on stage and how they sing and how they clap and how they are full of life and how they dance, you see, and become better than them. If you're a pastor, find out the best preachers. Become better. Become better. The way you used to dress last year. Let's see a 2020 version because we are pressing on. Good morning, my dear friends. My name is Pastor Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of the Powerhouse Ministries International. Once again, we start another year with God's favor abundant toward us. Indeed, this is our year of harvest. I wish to personally invite you to join us at any of our three services, 6 a.m., 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. This year, as we enter into the harvest, I shall be teaching a lot about your sickle for the harvest. You need a sickle to enter into your harvest. Come and join us as we take our harvest this year come with your family and friends you are welcome any day anytime in jesus name god